Welcome back or welcome to Eyes on O-Line, Pat Eiflin Center, Ohio State University, the how and why. When I watch an offensive line prospects, I gravitate towards those that are technically and fundamentally sound from the ground up. But there's also another trait that is absolutely non-negotiable that all offensive linemen must have when I'm watching, and that's competitive toughness being a junkyard dog. Now, I want you guys to watch Pat Eiflin here. His technique is going to be tremendous here. Watch the footwork climbing to the uh, second level. Watch him secure A-gap, but then watch what he does when he gets to the linebacker. That's pass it. protection is not passive. Again, competitive toughness. Uncover being a junkyard dog right here. Look at this look for work here. Again, a gotta have it moment. Second and two from the two yard line. Watch the competitive toughness and watch the junkyard dog come out and Eifen right here. He's driving the nose tackle. He's trying to work through a stalemate. And then, boom, finishes and gives that little added extra to let this man know that he's going to be there all day. From the three-yard line, I got to have it moment. This is just a mindset. Driving the nose tackle off the ball until the ball is in the end zone. We talk about consistency at the center position. There is no one in this class who is better at consistently executing the necessary techniques of the ace block than Pat Eiflin. Doesn't matter what game film we turn on, you'll notice that Pat Eiflin excels at getting movement at the point of attack on ace blocks, working with his guard, creating lift and drive, while also keeping his shoulder square and is able to fit and find linebackers coming off on the next level. This clip has many great teaching points in it. We talked about Eiflin's ability to work with either guard on combo blocks and ace blocks. Now, what I want you guys to pay attention to here is the mental processing, the awareness and body control that Eiflin displays on this particular play. You will notice that the three tech spikes here um, at the snap. And you'll see Eiflin is able to secure the line of scrimmage, get the three techs shoulders to turn. Eiflin displays very good body control, squaring his shoulders back up on the linebacker that appears. This is a good play to highlight here. The nature of this play is going to have Eiflin and his left guard working all the way back to a fold player that's standing over here that you can barely see. Now, the thing is, is Eiflin has to use proper footwork, gaining vertical ground with that left foot still working through the play side breast of the defensive tackle so he's going to stay heavy on this combo by keeping his outside shoulder free and the still is able to work back to that fold player and actually springs a big block just another great example of Eiflin excelling handling movement across his face securing that nose tackle and then staying on track to climb and make an impactful block at the second level. Okay, you see it looks like he kind of hops here, but then pay attention to the feet. The feet really do drive and stay powerful in the ground, and then he just shows great body control executing. Let's watch Eiflin's footwork right here. Let's watch the four steps that he takes moving up to the second level and watch the body control and the patience. This is textbook climbing to a linebacker who is really static. Eyes on Eiflin's footwork on this particular play and how it leaves him in great position to take away this spiking three technique.
Now you're going to notice that Eiffel is going to step and gain ground with that first step, slightly opening the hip, which creates a very good inline angle for him to take on this three technique. Notice that Eiffel is going to maintain a functional base with great power, and it also displays the mental processing and awareness to really put it all into play at the snap of the ball. I'm going to pause it after his first step, and then we're going to see the hit, lift, and drive at the point of attack on contact. See it there? This is going to be a thing of beauty right here. We're going to pay attention how Eiflin secures the nose tackle here, allows his guard to overtake, but displays proper footwork, efficient footwork, wasting no movement, also shows mental processing and awareness to be able to pick up this linebacker who's going to hit the gap at the snap. When faced with a two-eye alignment and the center's asked to reach this guy, many centers really settle on staying midline of the two two eye and slowly working their hips around. One thing that I've noticed that Eiffel is consistently able to do is snap, drive off the back foot, open up the hip or lose ground just a little bit. His targeting and his head placement allows him to get his head all the way across. He targets about a half yard outside of the shoulder pad. You'll see his hands immediately latch to the outside. His head is on the outside. His hands are down the middle and he easily reaches this two eye. We highlighted Eiflin's footwork and targeting when reaching that two-eye shade earlier, which is no easy task. Now let's look at how effortlessly he makes reaching this zero technique, and let's start from the ground up. Watch him drive off the backside leg. Watch the quickness off the ball. Watch the footwork. Watch the hip open, and then watch the violent hands, and then the targeting with his landmark as he gets to the outside shoulder, which actually gets his head across immediately. Eiflin literally did that so fast, we're going to slow it down. This is an excellent job of snapping and reaching this nose tackle. Eiflin has done a great job in almost every film that I've watched of not only reaching nose tackles, but also making uh, two-eye reaches look very easy. These are not easy and these are not gimmies by any stretch of the imagination uh, for these centers. I want you to pay attention to the footwork. I want you to pay attention to the overall targeting and to the hand placement. Watch how Eiflin is able to flip and work his hips around, completely sealing the nose tackle to the backside. I always talk about how valuable fundamentals are. I want you guys to watch Eiflin right here as this defensive end is going to try to come back into the formation. Eiflin turns this into a long reach and rips and runs on this guy as Ohio State runs option this way. So watch the footwork. Watch the rip and run almost like it's a long reach. This is pretty. Here's another good example of Eiflin's ability to display that footwork needed to slightly open that hip and create that inline angle, which is going to put him on a track to pick up this spiking D tackle here. Yet again, another good example you'll see here, he just creates those inline angles so effortlessly with his footwork and that ability to really open up the play side hip and which way he's working. We've talked about Eiflin's ability to open up his hips in either direction and maintain functional power in the run game. But now let's have eyes on Eiflin's ability to open up his hips and slide in either direction in pass protection or even set back and over in either direction in pass protection. Now, this is important because hip tightness as a center can be absolutely detrimental, creating those angles that you need in pass protection um, when defenders are trying to gain ground on you. Watch Eiflin here. Now as we show it in real time here, watch how effortlessly he does this. 
This is a nice job of driving off this front foot and adding into the slide. They've got kind of a two jet protection look right here. And you'll notice that he's able to create the proper space and be able to create the proper angle by creating space that allows him to efficiently move into his spot and be in position to anchor against this three technique. Here we go, we're gonna look at the fluidity and Eiffel's ability to drive and slide, covering up this three technique with a proper angle. Let's just focus solely on Eiffel's feet here. Watch the drive in this direction. Watch the base he maintains. Watch the angle he then creates with his kick leg. This is a very good clip here. You'll see Eiffel's able to drive off that foot here and able to set back vertically here. No hip tightness at all. It's effortless. And now we look at it in real time with the anchor. An area for improvement for Pat Eiflin and pass protection is his adjustment when sliding or giving help in one direction or even when he's on an island and he gets movement back across his face or movement where a defensive lineman has a two-way go. You'll see here he's able to pick up this looper uh, on this stunt here, but what happens is he leans just a little bit. Now, right here it's not an issue, but it's going to get him into trouble in a clip that i show you here shortly. You see the lean there? He's able to anchor. Again, you'll see just the issues here adjusting. An area for improvement in Eiffel's game is the consistency in executing the long back block versus the three technique. Notice I said execution and not so much the technique. Eiflin's initial footwork is perfectly fine on the back block. He's able to open up the hip, able to work the inline angles, but you'll notice when he makes contact, his pad level raises and he almost ends up straight-legged. We'll pause here. By this time, he loses power, and you'll see that he doesn't have much more to bring his feet, and so the defender is able to wipe him. We talked about Eiflin's pad level raising when he had to work back on a back block versus a three technique. The footwork and the technique was fine. The pad level raised at the last minute. Look at how crisp and how powerful he is on this back block versus a two eye. Watch the hands and the hips come through. Typically, when I'm watching offensive line play, you see those offensive linemen that naturally are just finishers. They're going to finish in every situation, every chance they get. That can't be taught, in my opinion. You can coach up and harp on finishing, but that's not going to make somebody a better finisher uh, at heart. Another thing that I feel like that you can't really teach or coach, a player has to have it or not, and that's a center's ability to pull. Now, watch Eiflin here. Snap. Pull, pause, change directions, track a moving target, execute the block in space, and finish. Truly a thing of beauty. I can't overemphasize enough the value of center that has tremendous agility and ability to pull and get out in space. Now watch iPhone here snap the ball turn and open up that hip and run just a textbook pull here watch this and then he just finds somebody to work and finish focus in on Eiffel's ability to drive off that front foot create space and slide effortlessly, gaining vertical ground here. He shows no hip tightness. The footwork is very efficient, and, and really the, the movement is crisp. Also pay attention to where Eiflin's eyes are. His eyes are headed in the direction in which he's going. There are so many times where offensive linemen have their eyes in the wrong place. 
freeze. Now he's going to look for work. Found it. This is what strength at the point of attack looks like and also a sense of urgency getting off the ball. Let's start from the ground up. Look at Eiflin's ability to generate force through the ground, through his end steps, and also why maintaining a powerful base. Also pay attention to the hands uh, shooting in and leveraging, creating lift, and then watch the hips come through as Eiflin drives. We're going to show this clip in a very intimate way. The end result is going to be tremendous strength power at the point of attack, moving this big nose tackle here who's in a head up technique, and which is not an easy task for a center. Okay, But what I really want you guys to pay attention to is Eiflin's footwork here, his ability to re-leverage the hips. Okay, I want you to watch how he wastes no movement in that footwork, but then he generates power through the ground through his insteps and is able to violently strike and get movement on this nose tackle. Let's zoom in on the feet first. Now we'll look at hands and feet. Let's take a look at it in real time now. Here's another nice job of just uh, shows the mental processing. He just has the feel for where he's at and what they're doing within the scheme right here. Notice how Eiflin, we're going to have half slide to the left here. So tackles out, guards out. Eiflin's going to add in here. But notice when he adds in, he's going to give a hand to this backside A gap so that the guard can work over and really be able to pick up that man but notice how Eiflin has his eyes still towards the slide and is just kind of filling in here uh, while creating that space this is a thing of beauty in proper position now to pick up that D tackle who's slanting towards him this is one on one pass protection at its finest here I want you guys to pay attention to Eiflin's feet here. Uh, he shows the ability to feather and mirror back and forth um, as he sets aggressively with even weight distribution. Watch how center and grounded he looks right here. Just stout. Watch the hands and the ability to reset the hands and really uh, keep in the defender's chest here. We talk about gotta have it moments. Ohio State versus Michigan. Ohio State 14. Michigan 17 3 minutes 12 seconds left in the fourth quarter Eiflin snapping sees nothing looks for help and then he's looking to go and get more he's leading away for his quarterback gotta have it moment 